Hi everyone, it's Lorelai. In today's devlog, I wanted to show you this new mouse system that I set up for my game where you can click to attack, which is very common in a lot of RPGs. It was a little difficult in Pixel Game Maker MV to implement this mouse system, but I'm really glad that I did. It's still a little clunky, but I wanted to make this devlog now while it was still kind of fresh in my mind and I will fine tune it like over time. So let's take a look at it. As you can see, I've got all these slimes here. I can click one and you'll notice uh, that it has a little circle around it. I still need to center that circle. I recently redid some of these sprites, so it's offset is a little wrong, but it still works. And if I click another one, that one disappears. And that took forever. <laughs> that took forever to figure out. If I right click, it also disappears. So this is the targeting mechanism. And eventually when I target something, I'll have their health bar appear at the top, which I'm pretty excited about here. Let me get rid of this for you. I also have a custom cursor. That was the only way I could get this to work, but these are all placeholder graphics for now. So what does this mean? So I can click, and I can get into range and then my character will run and attack and then and then it'll die. <laughs> uh, there's still this little movement where when it dies, she kind of like runs off in a direction. I need to fix that. So again, it's not a perfect it's not a perfect system, but it works. Uh, she will also attack just in melee range. Right. Just like that. And uh, I can't show it now, but let me restart. If she is in range of multiple, she should prioritize the locked character. Okay, that didn't work. <laughs> Normally, she will prioritize the locked targeted character. Um, but again, it's still it's still a little glitchy, but it still kind of works. Okay, I'm happy with it. I'm happy with how it works. I just I, I do need to fix a few things. That's all. Okay. Uh, but let's go into it. Okay, so this took a few attempts and by a few attempts I mean it took like all day to figure out the first thing I needed to do was make a cursor I needed to make a custom cursor so that when I clicked on things It would count as an object interacting with another object and that just made things a lot easier So first I have the regular cursor which is set to follow my mouse coordinates I used Baz's tutorial on top-down shooter to figure this out so it's basically a picture of a cursor, uh, but this one is set to transparent. Uh, here's the normal version. This one is set to transparent because it is just following the mouse and that's all it's doing. I then have a child cursor that is attached to the regular cursor. So under display and parent, it is attached to its, its mama. It's attached to its parent. Okay, and then this is the actual visual. This one is probably going to be the one interacting with a menu system that I'll have because this one is on the above layer, uh, wherever it is. <laughs> it's around here somewhere. Uh, if I go to objects, I'm sure it's around. If I go to cursor, there, yeah, okay. So this one is on the... Well, actually, okay, all right, I take that back. <laughs> the first cursor is on the above layer, the, the mama cursor, and so cursor display is also on the above layer. That way it shows up above all of my above things. Otherwise, if it's on the player layer, uh, it, it would end up going underneath these, these cliff tiles. But I found out that I needed a cursor to be on the player layer if I wanted to interact with anything on the player layer. So I made another guy. I made player cursor. And this player cursor is not a child of cursor because otherwise it would appear on the above layer. Player cursor is just set as a secondary object, as another object on the player layer, so up here, I guess it's in the same spot, <laughs> almost, but it is constantly following that cursor. So I have it set to change its X coordinate according to, I guess, cursor display. I could also change it to regular cursor display um, or the regular cursor. But yeah, so it's constantly changing its X, Y to the cursor. So I have a lot of things tracking the X, Y of the mouse. I've got the cursor tracking the mouse and then I've got the player cursor tracking the cursor and then cursor dis display is just a child that is attached to cursor. 
The player cursor is the one that's actually doing the clicking uh, because that's the only way that I could get it to interact with objects that were on that layer. So I have a few things going on here, not too much, um, but this was after, again, like a day of experimenting, a very long time of trial and error uh, where I was able to clean all of this up. And just an FYI, this is not a proper tutorial. This is just me going over what I did. If you're interested in this system for your own game, I can try to make a tutorial. The only thing is that it's not entirely perfect yet. Uh, so I might have to wait a little bit to fine tune all of the little glitchiness to make it smooth and nice before I feel confident and comfortable making a tutorial for this. But uh, I think if you follow along with my explanation, you'll get the logic and you, you could figure it out yourself and probably make it better than mine. <laughs> and if you do, let me know down in the comments. Okay, so let's go into the common actions first. Um, so we already talked about follow cursor, right? And the loop to continue following the cursor. Then we have two common actions. We have check lock and unlock. Check lock is the big one. Uh, that one is set to if A is pressed, and A in this game is left click, and its field of vision, which I have named tip, is on the enemy group. So it's discovering the enemy group through its, its field of vision, which is just, just the tip. So if both of these are good, I'm clicking left click, and the tip of it is on an enemy object, then it will execute an object action. That's all, <laughs> very simple. So it's going to execute set click ID, which is over here. So we've got set click ID, and this is where it gets a little complicated. I'm using two variables here. One variable sets the click ID, and the second variable sets the locked ID. And so I have it comparing the clicked ID to the locked ID and then checking if they are equal or checking if they are not equal. It's a little complicated, but here we go. So set click ID. So first I quickly lock that object uh, because I need to lock that object so the engine knows what the heck I'm referring to. <laughs> so I'm locking that object that I just clicked on. Then what I'm doing is I'm setting a self variable to clicked instance ID. So what did I click on? Okay, I wanna know what I just clicked on. I clicked on the locked object that I just locked. I clicked on that object's instance ID, which is a built-in variable, thank goodness. <laughs> thank goodness there's a lot of built-in variables. So here's instance ID. There's also single unit instance ID, but instance ID is what worked for me. So now I have a variable that has the information of what I clicked on. I have that number and then I'm quickly unlocking that object just real quick okay so this goes in like an instant or i don't know a frame i don't know how it works <laughs> goes really really quick so now i have a variable that has what i clicked on i want to see if i've already clicked on that or if i haven't if i have not already clicked on this uh it would be if the clicked id is not equal to so that's what this is over here is not equal to my locked id and as I mentioned, there's another variable. There's the locked ID variable. So I see that I clicked on something. Now I want to determine if I'm going to lock it or not. Uh, I did already technically lock it, but then I released the lock um, just so I could get that variable. I do want to lock that object if my previous locked object is not the same as my clicked object. And then I do not want to lock the object if I already have it locked if if the numbers are the same and the reason I do not want to lock the target if I already have it locked is I'll show you um, is if well I can't show you because I don't want to undo all of my hard work because <laughs> I might I might not get it back again um, but if I in my testing if I clicked this more than once okay chill girl chill right, she needs to attack him she's she's on a <laughs> she was on a rampage. Um, if I clicked this twice and then right clicked, it would end up that I would have to right click the same amount of times that I left clicked it, that I locked it. So I locked it. And then if I click again, all right, I'm going to have to fix that. That's, that's easy. I think I know what's going on there. Uh, but if I clicked again, 
it would lock it a second time and it would count as two locks or something like that. I don't know. I don't know how the engine works. I, I, <laughs> I'm just figuring things out as I go. Um, and I would need to right click two or three or four times, depending on how many times I clicked. So I fixed that um, by saying, if clicked is locked, then don't do anything. We're done. Go back to following the cursor. Um, nothing, nothing needs to be done. So now we only need to right click one time when we want to unlock anything. But if the clicked ID is not equal to the locked ID, meaning it is a different instance of, of an object that I'm clicking on, a, dis a different slime, then I'm going to go ahead and lock that object. OK, I'm going to go ahead and lock that new slime and then set that click ID, what I clicked on, to the current locked object's ID. <laughs> Does that make sense? And then go, go ahead and go back to following the cursor. So let's see how that works in the game. So if I press F1, I can bring up the object data and let's let's check out. I don't know. Uh, what slime are you? You are. Well, wow, no, leave me alone. <laughs> uh, I don't know. OK, OK, I figured it out. So this is slime. This is regular slime here. Instance ID three versus this one is another slime, which is either six or seven. I don't know. And then this one would also be six or seven. But this one is three. I <laughs> double checked. This one is is instance ID three. So when I clicked on this, oh, here she goes again. I have to attack and then go away. I just need an exit to her her movement. And I will do that later. <laughs> if I click on that and I go to player cursor, that's this. That's the thing clicking. You will see that it's clicked instance ID is three and it's locked instance ID is three. Now, when I click on it again, um, nothing will happen. It'll stay at three. If I click on this guy, now my clicked is instance is seven and my locked instance is seven. And so when I click on this, it's going to change my clicked instance ID to three. It's going to see that they are different numbers. Three and seven are different numbers. And then it will set both of them to three. Ta -da! And then I can right click. And I had set locked instance ID to minus one. For some reason, I don't remember. <laughs> but it was important that it was not zero. And I think it had to do with me clicking off the map. So if I had something locked and I left clicked literally anywhere, I think it would become zero and I don't know, I don't remember, but <laughs> it would end up unlocking this and it was it was a mess. I needed it to stay locked because otherwise bad things would happen. Okay, so that's that's the logic there. That is how I have locked a, a character. Um, there's a lot of other stuff going on. Okay, a lot of other stuff going on, but that's how I clicked. <laughs> And then we have unlock, which is pretty simple. If B is pressed, or in my case, right click, then it does all of these things. Uh, first, it releases the lock, which is the important thing. Then it's going to destroy an object, which I haven't gone over. Then it is going to reset the clicked ID and the locked ID. So they go back to normal. So either um, so zero and negative one. And then it's going to turn off this switch, which I also haven't gone over. And because this episode has gone on uh, long enough, I think I will wait till next episode to go ahead and explain how the heck I'm getting this object to show up. So this is the locked object. Uh, spoiler alert. <laughs> It's right here. Um, but let's go ahead and do that next episode. I hope you're enjoying this series. I'm enjoying making this series. So that's cool. And I can't wait to show you more of my game. I'll talk to you later. Bye.